friends, Mark Holmes here, and as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. Okay, so it's Victory Monday, which sure beats Loser Monday. <laughs> so I'm wondering how the Redskins, the Giants, and the Eagles are all feeling today. My guess is not as good as our Cowboys are feeling right now. And in fact, we've got good news because some of our Cowboys are feeling better. Robert Quinn, um, as well as Van Der Esch. You know, Van Der Esch had the neck stinger. Uh, Robert Quinn, ribs. Um, they said both of those, they got good news on them. Not going to be long-term. And having the bye week really and truly helps. So great news and shout-outs to those guys because, hey, we need them all. It was all hands on deck yesterday. It's a great feeling. But I got to tell you, have you noticed how quiet it is today? You know, all of the trash talkers, all those guys that were trolling me, they don't seem to be around much. Hmm. Just like cockroaches when the lights come on. Don't you think? Now, Stephen Jones says, you know, during the bye week, which is, um, of course, the 29th being the last day. <sighs> you just stayed up to 2 o'clock. The 29th is the last day for NFL trades. And Stephen Jones says during the bye week, you know, we look to get people healthy and things like that, give the guys some rest and stuff. And we'll look around. If there's something that we see that can help our teams, we'll look into it. But at the moment, we're not, per se, looking for anything. <laughs> As opposed to the Eagles. The Eagles, man, they seem to be desperate to get rid of a number one pick. Um, I mean, they are literally trawling everybody, trying to get some cornerbacks and wide receivers. There was rumor out that they're trying to trade um, Alshon Jeffries and um, a number one pick to the Cardinals for uh, Patrick Peterson. You know, I mean, that's a whole lot to be given up for a guy who's 29. I know he's still really, really good, but damn, that's literally mortgaging your future. That stinks of desperation. And I owe you guys an apology because, wow, I was so happy this morning. How happy was I? was so happy I forgot to turn the microphone back up. So I did a whole morning video, and literally you couldn't hear a damn thing. That's how bad it was today, but I apologize. But, you know, it's Victory Monday. We all make mistakes. I, I'm certainly human. Um Tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern, we'll be, of course, doing our live stream. And, man, it's going to be fun. And I'm hoping, it, and I know I'm getting trolls. I know I'm getting trolls because people know how to push my buttons. But we had people yesterday that were like, Dak Prescott is basically Quincy Carter. We had other people saying, trade Dak, trade Dak, he's a bum. And listening to some of the people out there... I, my God, you, you guys are like Shannon Sharp. Literally, you have one bad play. You take one sack or you end up having one pass or interception and all you hear is bench Dak, trade Dak. Do you guys ever watch any other teams play? I'm curious if they were saying the same thing about Carson Wentz who had an interception and two fumbles and couldn't get 200 yards passing. And the only touchdown that the Eagles got was because they got two penalties, 15 yarders that kept drive, that drive alive. If it weren't for that, they would have ended up with just three freaking points. But again, I know some of you Cowboy Dak Prescott haters will say, yeah, I'll take Carson Wentz over Dak anytime. Okay, come on. Let's start giving the man some credit, okay? I know when I'm watching the shows, you know, Shannon Sharp is giving Dak a C for his grade for the game. And, um, of course, most of the talking shows are like, well, the rest of the Cowboys showed up. So, Dak, all he had to do was just basically be there. You know, that shit's getting old. Let's start taking a look at what this guy has accomplished. In fact, I'll make sure I get the statistics. Because when you start looking down... At all of the records that Dak Prescott has of the Dallas Cowboys, as well as some NFL ones, you're looking at somebody who, whether you like it or not, you haters, Dak Prescott's going to pretty much own almost all of the Dallas Cowboys quarterback records, barring injury. 
All those ones Tony Romo had, they're going to fall. And they're going to fall in short order. I'm just telling you, at the present rate, and the way he his, his maturation is going, I'm telling you, you're looking at Russell Wilson. If we can get the rest of the team to play like they did last night, it won't be long before we have a Super Bowl. And I know that's crazy for me to say that um, after coming off three-game losing streak. But understand, the NFL season is, it ebbs and flows. You have good weeks and bad weeks. A couple weeks ago, you had Minnesota Vikings receivers begging to get out of there. And everybody was saying, Kirk Cousins, just cut him. Just cut him at the end of the year. Bench him. Look what he's doing the last two weeks. He lit up the Eagles. And uh, he lit up uh, the Lions yesterday. It's the way it goes in football. There's no such thing as a perfect season. Well, there was one. But you're going to see quarterbacks that have good games and bad games. You're going to see defensive ends that have good games and bad games. You're going to see coaches that call great games and bad games. It's just the way it is in football. And understand, the guys on the other side of the field, they're paid to do the same thing. And it's a give and take. What you hope is that you're giving a whole lot more than you are taking away from them. You know what I'm saying? I think I said that right. Or are you taking more than you're getting? Ah, you know what I mean. Yet you get more wins than the other guys. That's the bottom line. All right, so I got some work here. I got to get the face frame made for this cabinet and um, keep on keeping on. I'll see you guys soon.